So we tie the first talk here. The first talk is going to be with uh, Philip. He's uh, the current uh, main developer for GJS and the uh, <laughs> different experience than last year, <laughs> where I had seven or eight hungover people. <laughs> um, so yeah, my name is uh, Philip Pimento, this is how you find me on IRC and Twitter. Um, I I'll also work at Endless, but I'm giving this talk in my capacity as a CGS maintainer. Um, and this is going to be an overview of what's new this year, uh, since we're having lots of, uh, yeah, we have, yeah, we have lots, we have lots of new things last year and we have, uh, lots of new things this year. Um, so, uh, last year was really an overview of the new things in the JavaScript language that you could use, but, um, uh, dividing it now into three parts, there's, uh, uh, social progress, <laughs> technical progress, and uh, how you can help. Um, and yeah, so as I've uh, sort of um, you know continued to maintain GJS, I've got a better idea of, uh, of who's using it now. Uh, so like for one thing, it's the most important for users because a lot of apps and and GNOME Shell are, are based on it, so it needs to not break. Um, Another audience is app developers. So, uh, you know, for apps like Volari and um, you know, Gnome Sound Recorder, other other apps that are written in JavaScript, um, you know, need to provide a nice developer experience for people who write apps. Uh, there's the Gnome Shell developers, <laughs> some of whom some of whom overlap with the uh, app developers. Um, so. Uh, you know, GJS needs to be embeddable inside GNOME Shell, and uh, we need to provide a good developer experience uh, in that regard as well. And then there's Shell extension developers. Uh, I feel like they've kind of been overlooked. Uh, I, certainly when I became a maintainer of GJS, I didn't realize uh, how many people were developing them and how important they were. So um, yeah, we've got to provide good facilities uh, for them as well. Uh, often they're not as connected to the GNOME community as the app developers and the GNOME shell developers, so they don't hear news as easily uh, you know, as, as the other groups of developers. Uh, so we, you know, we've got to make an effort to connect them and, and uh, let them know about changes in the new features and things. So um, this is how I kind of think about uh, who uses GJS now. Um, so first I'm going to talk about the, uh, the social progress. Uh, social in the sense of uh, you know, community and uh, everything that's not you know, actually writing JavaScript code. So the most important thing, we switched to GitLab. Um, I don't see Carlos in the audience, but uh, we should make sure to redirect that applause to him. Uh, <laughs> um, because this has been fantastic. Um, I mean, here's some of the, the things that we've got. We, you know, since making the switch, uh, you know, the number of first-time contributors jumped, um, the number of casual contributors jumped, and, you know, could be a coincidence, but I don't think so. So, uh, you know, <laughs> just saying. People have come along and volunteered to do stuff. That never happened before. Um, so, I know, even though, we heard in the uh, in the product manager talk yesterday that people just don't come along and do stuff. Occasionally they do, <laughs> and I, I think this is very temporary. And I think it's just because of GitLab. Um, and so you know we've got to make sure that we uh, retain these people and get get them interested. Um, the uh, workflow for reviewing patches has become much easier, so it costs me a lot less time. Um, you know. And then, you know, then there's the 
continuous integration. I know that's been a hot topic with a lot of projects, but, uh, and I'll talk about it in more detail later. Um, and then it opens up a lot of new possibilities for the future, like uh, the elusive someone could look into writing a merge request bot for, uh, for GitLab. That would be really awesome. Um, so yeah, continuous integration. Uh, we have for GJS actually a really sophisticated system with uh, like quick tests with uh, linters and uh, you know regular tests, thorough tests that uh, you know <laughs> things like uh, building it on different architectures and uh, you know code coverage uh, results and uh, building it with different configure options so that so that those don't break and uh, various debug modes. Um, you know, these uh, we, we use different compilers. Uh, we run linters, so this is really nice because contributors get feedback on their patches within a few minutes. So, like you know, previously, you might attach a patch to Bugzilla, and then the next day I look at it, and you know I I don't want to be counting people's semicolons uh, you know, any more than anybody else does. Um, so you know the continuous <coughs> integration does this now, and uh, you know. It helps me uh, because you know if it builds on the continuous integration, I can pretty much trust that it's gonna it's gonna build if I merge it. Uh, and um, you know, previously that was sort of like an implicit process. Well, okay, if I've seen a couple of patches from you, then I'm pretty sure that you built it. <laughs> Otherwise, I have to build it myself and uh, all that stuff. And then uh, you know, we have. Uh, the tests that maybe don't need to be run on every pull request, you can run them manually. So like, if you know that, you know, oh, my thing might break garbage collection, then you can run the garbage collection test. And uh, Claudio Andre, who is not here, uh, set all of this up and uh, he maintains it, and he's always trying to make it faster. So big thank you. Um, you know, Linters. I said before I don't like to be counting uh, semicolons, and, and nobody else does. So I, I feel like the the parts of code review that are automatable, they should be automated. Otherwise, we're just wasting our time. Um, I've noticed it can be frustrating for casual contributors uh, because um, you know you 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 use the code style that you're used to, and then you push it to GitLab, and you get like a um, you, know, you don't get the green check mark immediately, which can be frustrating, so um, you know we need to kind of do a better job at you know, documenting what new contributors should expect from it, um, and like giving instructions on how to run the linters on your own machine uh, before you push your code. Uh, we also need to still do some tweaking uh, on the configurations. Uh, so, uh, obviously, I've uh, been doing uh, some of this uh, sort of. Uh, Aside from uh, from the internship, so thank you. Um, and it's also a fact that you know we have both JavaScript code and C++ code in GGS, and C++ linters are, are terrible and not configurable at all. So uh, it, you know it's it's a bit of work in progress still, um, but we're getting there. Uh, we have deployments. Um, you know, thanks to Claudio, we publish our code coverage reports uh, after every build on GitLab pages. Um, so, you know, previously that was kind of hard to set up and run, and you had to do it yourself, so nobody bothered. And now you can just see it online. Um, he also made a uh, CI job where it publishes a flat pack package with uh, the GJS interpreter. I, I think we haven't fully uh, you know, realized the potential of that. I, um, so if you have any ideas what would be useful for you, uh, like you know, if, the, if you think flat pack package is useful, you should let Claudio know. Um, the documentation site, uh, here's a screenshot. Um, so we do have a GJS documentation site, I think, that knowledge is uh, mostly permeated the community by now. Um, so Evan Walsh's uh, uh, GSOC project is uh, is working on that. 
Uh, so you'll have seen that yesterday if you attended the, uh, the intern lightning talk. Um, so yeah, we're getting some improvements to the automatically generated documentation. Uh, there are some things that were wrong. Uh, and also adding some sample apps so that are meant to show off the best practices of uh, programming in GJS. And so thank you, Evan. Also, thank you to Everaldo, who hosts the website for free, uh, and uh, has done so ever since my uh, free tier AWS account ran out. Uh, what's next? The review backlog. Uh, so we migrated all our uh, stuff uh, from Bugzilla to GitLab. Uh, there were a bunch of stale patches sitting in Bugzilla. Some, the oldest one was 10 years old. Uh, I tried to turn all of these into merge requests uh, on GitLab. Um, some of them still need a bunch of work uh, that I need to find time to work on. Um, so basically the arrangement is uh, I review everybody else's merge requests and Cosmo Checky reviews mine. Uh, so thank you to Cosmo for reviewing tens of thousands of lines of code. Uh, he's, uh, yeah, he stepped down from being a GGS container a while ago, but uh, it's important that we have code review. So uh, and caught some dumb mistakes that I've made, so I'm really <laughs> grateful for that. Um, if you want to help with this, adopt a stale merge request. Uh, there are some in there that are that would be quite useful, but I just don't have time to work on. Um, so, yeah, uh, find one that looks interesting and uh, and talk to me, and I'll I'll, I'll walk you through it. Um, we've been in the press. Indirectly, uh, so I'm going to discuss this uh, um, party tweet problem, otherwise known as the GNOME Shell infamous memory leak. Uh, so, like GNOME Shell is uh, and indirectly GJS was discussed on a lot of, uh, of these uh, Linux watcher sites, and um, you know there were some constructive reactions uh, and some. <laughs> really terrible reactions and some comically uninformed reactions. <laughs> and, uh, uh, I want to thank uh, Shri over there and Andy Holmes, who is not here, uh, for like, running interference and uh, you know, staying positive <laughs> while uh, you know, George's in my blog post got uh, completely blamed. <laughs> so my, my favorite uh, comically uninformed reaction was <laughs> Leonard Kutcher ruined GNOME by designing GNOME Shell. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody who knows Leonard knows that he never touches GNOME Shell. <laughs> so uh, I don't know. I don't know where people get their information. But, um, so one good thing that came out of this, uh, um, you know, press mess is uh, that you know, I really heard a lot of ideas from people starting to think about this problem that, uh, that we were trying to solve. And uh, you know, people suggested things that um, you know, I wouldn't have thought of myself but, you know, with our small community of, of GJS developers. So we got some good ideas out of that. I, I think the publicity really sort of uh, you know, activated the GNOME community to start, to start thinking about these things. Uh, I didn't expect that, but it was really nice. Uh, we've been collaborating with other projects. Um, as you know, uh, Mozilla uh, makes the JavaScript engine that we're based on, and um, has been, you know, trying to propose patches to them uh, to make it so that there's, uh, you know, <coughs> we don't have to add a lot of patches on top of our version of, uh, of Spider Monkey in order to make it even build. Um, you know, they're mainly interested in if it works in Firefox, then it works. They're they're not they're not opposed to us uh, you know, embedding it in, in Chrome Shell, but it's something that they generally don't want to spend a lot of effort on. Um, but I've gotten some really good help from uh, Mozilla developers. Uh, they're they're really interested as long as we write the patches, <laughs> um, you know, then they would like to have it work. Um, as for uh, Cinnamon, I had uh, some interest from one of the Cinnamon developers about uh, merging their GGS fork back into GJS. That would also be really nice. 
um, because you know there's really not nothing all that different about it. Uh, so I've merged some patches from them already, and uh, we're going to look at it again this cycle. Um, the technical progress. So there's going to be a bunch of slides here that I'll run through really quickly because uh, you know just like last year, uh, some of the <coughs> slides are, are for your reference after the talk, so I'll put them up. Um, so uh, in GNOME 3.30, we're going to upgrade to version 60 of SpiderMonkey. Um, you know, last year I had a whole bunch of language changes, like this is awesome, this is awesome. There's not going to be anything earth shaking this time, since you know we're only getting one year of uh, Mozilla improvements rather than four years. Um, this is this is going to affect uh, like all of the free developer audiences, but users should not see much change. Um, so we have asynchronous iterators. Uh, not going to live demo this link right now, but it's uh, it's like a live example that you can edit online. Um, you know, so this, it's really cool. There, there's you know an iterator uh, that you can build that actually you know once per iteration goes to the internet and gets a random number uh, and that that wasn't possible before. Um, we have stuff with uh, you know uh, dot 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 uh, that that was a big change last year and now it's uh, now it's even cooler. Um, more dot dot dot. <laughs> you can merge objects now. Uh, we have anonymous cache statements. So you know, sometimes you just don't care about errors, and uh, now uh, you can uh, not care with impunity. Uh, not to say that GNOME code ever ignores errors. Never. Ever. Um, promises have a finally method now. This is uh, popular in a lot of uh, third third party promise libraries, and now it's built in. Um, there's a bunch of things that are non-standard Mozilla syntax that are being removed. So if you're doing this, stop doing it. Mozilla is removing it, so it won't work anymore. Uh, especially uh, list comprehensions. Uh, the, as the famous author Mark Twain once said, reports that JavaScript is actually turning into Python are greatly exaggerated. Uh, we're changing byte array to be uh, the native byte arrays that JavaScript provides. Um, this is kind of the only you know, backwards incompatible change, but it's almost backwards compatible. Uh, so we just kind of couldn't avoid it because SpiderMonkey 60 is changing the way that uh, objects access properties. So the byte array is going to stop working anyhow. Um, if you don't want to port your code, there's a very simple change you can make to keep everything working. If you do want to port your code, here's, uh, you know, for your reference after the talk, here's some examples of uh, what you should not do anymore and what you should do anymore. The main change is that you can't assign past the end of a uh, built-in byte array, whereas previously with our custom byte array, you could and it would lengthen the array. Um, this is not certain to land in 3.30, but otherwise it'll land in GNOME 3.32 is ES6 modules. Um, now this is, uh, this is a wonderful contribution from somebody who just came along and volunteered for it. Uh, so I don't know their real name, but thank you, DJ Renren. Um, <laughs> so there's a merge request open. You can follow along with the progress uh, right now. Um, this is uh, Avi's uh, project. Um, this is intended to land in 3.32. Um, so we're going to take uh, GIO async operations, and uh, previously you'd say like uh, async operation provide a callback. Now if you leave out the callback, it will return a promise, and so then you can use the native JavaScript stuff uh, like async and await. Um, and so this is actually going to add annotations to GObject introspection so that other languages can make use of those too. I know that Rust is interested. Um, and Vala sort of has their own thing, but they could use this as well. Um, performance. Now, uh, you know, other, uh, you, so unlike the stuff that I was just talking about, this mostly affects users instead of uh, developers. The uh, party suite problem, this is the one that was uh, so widely discussed. Uh, I'm getting a bit short on time, so I'm going to run through this really quickly, but uh, you know, in JavaScript, um, objects all refer to each other. So when you know, the garbage collector uh, you know, is ready to 
collect an object, it knows that you know if this this first one is uh, is garbage. Or I should say recycling because I live in Vancouver and we don't have garbage there. Um, it knows it can blow away the whole tree uh, of objects because uh, you know all these other objects are only reachable from the first object. Uh, that's not the case with geobject references. Um, so if one is garbage, then you know it gets collected uh, and then it's gone and then. On the next pass, it knows that, oh, these three other ones, are, I don't have anything referring to them, collects them, and then on the next pass, these. So it takes three garbage collection pass passes. And these passes could happen like close to each other or like, six hours apart or whatever. So it's uh, you know a lot of objects are staying in memory that don't need to. Uh, so um, George has fixed this with the patch that we call the big hammer, uh, which just Always examines the uh, um, the objects to see if any got left behind, and immediately schedules another garbage collection, which is good for memory usage. Uh, could affect performance a little bit. There's another, you know, one of these uh, stale patches from uh, Giovanni that was sitting in Bugzilla that also helps a little bit. It's still a problem. Uh, so thanks to Georges for writing a great technical explanation on his blog and uh, posting these diagrams that I stole, and uh, thanks to Andy for pointing the name and the meme. So uh, you know, like any real bug, like Heartbleed, we have uh, we have a catchy name and a logo. Um, go through this really quickly. Uh, each G object in JavaScript uh, took up a bunch of bytes, and now it takes up uh, fewer bytes. <laughs> um, here's another scale patch set that it would be great if somebody could adopt. Uh, this is one from Giovanni that supposedly speeds up. You know, calling into C functions from JavaScript by uh, some ridiculous uh, number of percentage points. Um, but it's not going to land for 3.30, but we're going to try to do it for 3.32. It'll go faster if somebody would help. Uh, we have developer tools. Um, you know, this, again, doesn't directly affect users, but it's mostly good for app developers and extension developers. Uh, shell developers should be able to hook into it somehow. So we now have a profiler uh, since 3.28. Uh, this is mostly uh, Christian's work. Thank you, Christian. Um, and I finished it off. So you can uh, record a profile from uh, from your GTS program and look at it in Builder uh, or Sysproc. Um, we have uh, heap dumps, so you can see why your object isn't getting garbage collected. <coughs> um, this was originally a 10 years old patch that uh, we migrated over from Bugzilla. Um, Juan Pablo uh, contributed some API, and Andy Holmes wrote the, uh, the nice uh, graph thing that you see here. Um, the debugger, this is very exciting. Uh, I did it on the plane to Guadec. Um, I'm going to really try to land it in, uh, in 3.30. Uh, so it's going to have GDB like commands. You can break your programming printout values, and you know, this is something that people have been asking for for 10 years, and we're finally going to get it. I'm really excited about that. Um, so in the last few minutes, how can you help? Uh, I really think that GGS is on the threshold of uh, becoming a thriving project, but we need more people to work on it. Um, I've been the maintainer for a year and a half. Uh, I learned a bunch of stuff that was not documented. Um, I could write that documentation, uh, but it's going to take me a long time. So. Um, what I really like is for people to start helping out now. I'm not planning to go anywhere. I'm not going to get hit by a bus. Uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> no. You jinxed it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> now is the time for uh, for other people to uh, um, you know to get on the track to become a maintainer, so we can work together. And there's just too many things to do. I can't do them all. Uh, Here's some well-defined open projects. Uh, there are issue numbers, and there's a bunch of uh, newcomer-friendly issues if you're interested in a gentle introduction to the GTS code base. I'd even like to get some of those in for 3.30, so I'm, I'm definitely accepting patches for them right now. There's a bunch of uh, more fuzzily defined open projects. Like, I'm not really a C++ developer, so I'm doing a lot of winging it. Um, you know, ask Federico about code hospitable documentation. Uh, I really want to get that. We need a good developer workflow. Um, you know, building GJS is 
been a bit frustrating for the interns this year. So. Um, talked about merge request bots. Uh, one of the ideas that came out of the community after the PR stuff was investigate Mozilla's XPCOM, which might have a good solution for uh, integrating the garbage collector with uh, reference counting. And yeah, adopt a stale merge request. So, thanks. I don't know if the like one minute warning was including the questions. Did I talk through the question time? Uh, yeah, well, we also started a bit later. We can take uh, one or two questions. Okay. Uh, so I'll be running around with this mic. So. Yeah, so any questions? I see one over here. It'll give you the JS version, uh, if you're able to call that. And we have API that you can call in a program like Polari to set up the debugger. Um, and then you also have to uh, get it to break somehow um, when you first start it. And right now, the interaction model is read line. So <laughs> I wasn't sure if we'd be able to integrate it in Builder for 3.30. So. I mean, we kind of. We kind of do that with EDD as it is. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'll just create a PTY and then move it. Okay, that works because that's how I get tested. Uh, great. Uh, do we have a, a last question? Yeah. Hi. Would you upgrade to Node.js uh, 60 with it? Right? Yeah. Um, you mentioned a few pieces of syntax which aren't going to work in well. Do you know of any um, sources of scan? Scan existing code bases for those things. I'm thinking, like, in Ubuntu, if we decide to upgrade, like, our stable release to the new one, maybe we might want to know if anything's going to break and need to fix it in advance. You know, that that kind of is yeah. a very good point. If I don't know of any tools that would do that, but it's very easily possible to write one because JavaScript includes its own, like, syntax and ASP parser. Yeah. Um, and actually, if you write it in GJS, because they are Mozilla extensions, there are also Mozilla extensions for the parser. So I think you can just like load the whole program into an AST and then see if we can walk the tree for those particular AST nodes. All right, uh, I'm closing down the questions uh, for now. So thank you very much, Philip. Thank you. Thank you, Bastian, for letting me borrow your laptop, which yeah. has this, uh, uh, <laughs> the connector. Yes. Thank you.